Amanda with Bishop Hill Farm Flowers. And um, I know it's hot outside, so we'll just make this as short as possible. But I wanted to come see you um, on this trip because there was a lot of inspiration I get from seeing your Instagram posts and uh, seeing how beautiful your bouquets and stuff are on your farm. Um, I just have a couple questions just to give you a little background. The reason why I kind of really wanted to meet you was is that we're thinking about doing a little diversity on our farm. We um, are mainly just vegetable growers is what we grow. We grow a couple high tunnels of vegetables, some field blocks outside. And we're really thinking about possibly growing a little bit of flowers or dabbling, getting our feet wet, dabbling mm -hmm. in a little bit of flowers. We currently grow about 65 foot bed of zinnias and we grow a little bit of pro cut sunflowers and that's basically it. And um, that's basically just for pollinators and stuff like, plus uh, zinnia is my favorite flower. So I love to see a beautiful bed of zinnias. Do you have any inspiration or anything that, like a beginning flower farm, okay, I don't want to call myself a flower farmer, but. Um, <laughs> You're a farmer. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, somebody like me that wants to maybe transition a little bit more into the flower farming game, is there any advice you could give us or anything like that or, or varieties maybe or anything that would be easy to start off with? Well, I, I guess the, the, the first piece of advice is to have it in your core why you want to have the flowers. And you had already mentioned when we were talking earlier about they are good for pollinators. Right. But also when you're talking about diversifying your crops, that's also diversifying your income. And so right. you, 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 fit, you get that core belief of why you want to grow flowers and then it just kind of goes from your passion or why you want to do it. Um, you sell at a farmer's market? Yes, we do three farmer's markets a week. So um, not only are you diversifying your farm, but you're diversifying your table. People who may never stop to get the vegetables will stop to get the flowers. I got and you. then see what you have on your table. Or those who come here will be, and you say they're asking for flowers. Right, yeah. So we, it's really the, the time to do it. Yeah, we've had, we've had uh, I, could, I could probably more than put it on both hands, the people that have asked us, hey, would you guys be willing to grow flowers? Are you thinking about it in the future? Why don't you, you know, anything mm -hmm. like that. And a lot of it's because customer driven. Me and my wife were talking about it and I was like, maybe we should, you know, diversify just a little bit. Not, not that, you know, not that I want to completely move over to flowers from vegetable farming, but maybe have a little bit of diversity with being able to provide you know, eight to 10, 12 bouquets a week, possibly something like that, or even anything just to bring color to the table, maybe to draw those people in a yeah, little bit. I would say so. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of difference in all the flowers. Um, variety, all the varieties have different um, nuances, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when you're growing lettuce or greens, there it's all about, you know, the way you cut it, the way you right. grow it. Um, but the flowers, each individual has um, certain times to plant it, how to harvest it, then how to hold it after you've harvested it. I got you. Um, so there's going to be a lot of that new learning. So I would say start with what you do know and then branch off from there um, and, and include it in your regular rows and you, the way you have it set up with your irrigation because that seems to be working real well. Right, yeah. Um, I, I, a couple things I try, I try to do really well is... Um, is weeding, of course, is my first one. That's just something I am, I'm all about. And then irrigation is the other thing. So we do a lot of drip irrigation, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a big believer in drip. I, I think that's one of the best things ever invented oh, yeah. for a market farm or a gardener or anything is drip irrigation. So that's good to hear that there's that there's something I maybe don't have to change completely the way I'm going. Maybe just integrating it in a little bit at a time. Um, now, would you recommend a, a couple varieties to start off with, which is kind of easier to grow? That's a little more. Um, forgiving, maybe fail safe or for somebody like me that's beginning to get into it? Well, the, the thing that I'm thinking, and I'm going to wait for that plane to go over, you hear it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every two minutes, yeah. we're going to be hit. <laughs> DFW Airport's right there. Um, the thing that I was thinking is for you to figure out when is your downtime on your vegetables and see if there's flowers that can fill in that gap for you. Um, and around here, it's August. A lot of the farmers are saying, you know, it's, we're done. But if they had zinnias and sunflowers and basil still going, they could be still at market with a, a lot more on the flower side than their vegetable okay. side. Instead of totally missing market. Um, so, and, and summertime is also, you don't have to put the flowers in coolers because you're usually cutting for market. Um, and so you don't have to have the cooler because flowers don't go in produce coolers so well right. because of the ethylene. Right. Um, so you've got um, 
zinnias, mm -hmm. sunflowers, which you already know. Um, marigolds fit into the okay. zinnia pattern pretty well. Um, and then you can grow lemon basil. Lemon basil is um, like a Thai basil, uh -huh. and it, it holds up really well. It, it, it's hydrated, and it gives the green, so it sets the flowers apart a little bit when you put your bouquets together. And so you already know how to grow basil. Right, yeah, we grow so Genevieve basil now. So. And then gomfrina, I really like because it's those little balls. Uh -huh. So it adds a little interest to the bouquet that you put together. I got you, I got you. And that would be a great start. Um, and you'd probably have more flowers than you know what to do with. <laughs> probably probably and so then you, And then that's where I like to dry flowers, so you have no waste. So you also have to figure out how much, I mean, six or eight isn't going to be like a, a 60 foot row. Right. I mean, six or eight vases is not going to be, you're going to end up with a lot more flowers. But then there's also, you could sell the floors, or you could... Um, sell to someone who's doing weddings in their garage you know so there's a, there's a lot more outlets for flowers too that and like i i take flowers to the coffee shop right down the street oh that's nice you know and coffee shops want to have flowers so it there's a lot of possibilities that you're not reaching by not having okay well you've answered a couple of my questions but a couple big questions that i really had and uh, like i said that's the reason why i wanted to come down here and meet you because I do follow you on Instagram, and so I always see the bouquets you're putting out, and, and sometimes you put little pieces of advice in with them and stuff like that. Yeah, and, I, and, my education so. <laughs> Right, which is very useful because I do read them, and I'm, and I'm not, nice I know I'm not the only person that, that, that reads those besides just flipping through the pictures and stuff, so I thank you for that. But I know it's hot out here, so I won't take up any more of your time, but uh, I want to say thank you for allowing us to come down here and spend a little bit of time with you and get to meet you. And, uh, I'm definitely going to look into those flowers a little more, and uh, it's a lot to think about. So I appreciate yeah, that. Reach and, out to me anytime. Okay, that would be awesome. That yeah. would be great to do that. Thanks, Amanda. I appreciate yeah. it. Easy. Simple, easy, easy. quick. See? Nice. <laughs> now, if I could do that every week, it'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> and I, I